for phylloxera is a critical component of your vineyard management plan. It helps with weed and vineyard floor management as moving soil from infested blocks to non-infested blocks can increase the spread or the risk of spread of phylloxera. It also is going to be important for planning um, on replanting and knowing uh, where to use rootstocks within your vineyard. And lastly, it's important to know where infections are so that other vineyard tasks can be in conducted in a manner that they're done from non-infected blocks to infected blocks. Phylloxera feeding resembles drought stress and could seem like proper deficit irrigation, but these critters are often found in healthy looking vines and we'll show you how and where and when to scout. So a couple things I wanna to cover today is when and where to scout for phylloxera. The where is actually pretty easy, and that's because of those symptoms that phylloxera can inflict upon the vine that, that Gwen talked about. It's mostly related to vine vigor. Because phylloxera feeds on the roots, that causes the plant to be water stressed over time and nutrient stressed and all the other things that happen when a plant has no roots, right? So the interesting thing with phylloxera is it oftentimes early symptoms are probably masked by our regulated deficit irrigation practices. We're already controlling canopy vigor through a reduction in water. The problem or what you will likely notice that, hey, this is worse than just regulated deficit irrigation is when you can no longer control the rate at which you are reducing vigor. That's usually a good indicator that maybe I should look to see if something else is affecting the vineyard. So the two main things that you're looking for with, in, in vineyards with phylloxera really are a reduction in, in, in vigor in a canopy and then a pattern in that reduction in vigor. So the, for vigor, simply just look at the canopy. Are the shoots long? Are they short? You can also use imagery like NDVI that can help you identify areas or pockets of potential higher stress plants within the vineyard. And that's an interesting concept, this idea of a pocket. So as Gwen indicated, phylloxera is a soil-borne root pest, right? If you do a lot of movement of equipment or soil movement within the vineyard, phylloxera will move with it. So because of that, if you can think of how we typically manage within a vineyard row, we're dragging equipment up and down a row. So if phylloxera starts off as a single point source, as we move equipment, that potential infestation spreads. So you will start to see pockets or oval shaped pockets of vine stress within the vineyard. That is a great place to start your scouting practices for looking to where phylloxera might be. So oval shaped pockets of high vine stress or very low vine vigor. The next question I always get. Hey Michelle. What Gwen? When do you actually start scouting for phylloxera? Thank you. Sure. I have a script right there, right? right. So when do you scout for phylloxera? which is a great question by our often peanut gallery, Gwen Hoheisel. So when is actually a, a pretty good question to scout because a lot of people want to get out there and start scouting throughout the growing season. And because it's a soil borne pest, that means you could be doing a lot of digging for very little output, right? Actually, you may not actually be able to find the insect. insect. The beauty of phylloxera is that it's pretty temperature sensitive. It doesn't like really cold temperatures and it doesn't like really hot temperatures. So the ideal times to scout for this thing are when soil temperatures are moderate. So in the early spring and then in the fall, like now. So phylloxera won't start feeding on roots until the soil itself is about 64 degrees Fahrenheit. So you don't have to start digging much earlier than that. So that's, that's pretty nice. The beauty of that too is that's also when the vine is starting to develop a canopy, so you may even start to see early symptoms during that time period. At the end of the growing season, once the soil is starting to, to cool off a little bit, that's when you'll see a lot, really high populations of phylloxera on the root. So it's easier to see in the fall, but you might be able to do um, scouting much earlier than in the early spring. So in the fall, if you can imagine, Right before harvest, we've probably done regulated deficit irrigation. We're stressing the vines anyway. The vines are starting to shut down. That's when you can really start to notice pretty severe canopy symptoms. So it's also easier to identify where to potentially scout in, in the vineyard as well. So those are the two big things. When do you scout? Well, when the soils are moderate, so in the spring and the fall. And where do you scout? You look for areas in the vineyard that are seemingly under high levels of stress that you can't really explain otherwise. When you go out to the vineyard, you're gonna need a few tools. One is a shovel, script, not necessary. You're gonna need a trowel, a pruner to be able to prune large roots, 
flagging tape so that you can mark the vines that might have infestation. And then, of course, a hand lens so that you can see the phylloxera. But if you're like any good entomologist, you might wear these nice oculars that allow you to look and dig at the same time. And then lastly, you can wear these fashionable booties to help prevent spread. They're like masks for your feet. So now that we're suited up and booted up, we can actually start digging for phylloxera. So again, when you go into a vineyard and you, you want to potentially, you, you think about that concept of where we initially scout, we're gonna look for lower vigor sections, like we have here. Again, this is the end of the season and these, uh, these shoots and internodes are, are not really that, that long. So that's a good place to potentially start. And the next step we're gonna do is, instead of digging out in the middle of the vineyard row, we're gonna dig where there are grapevine roots because this insect feeds on grapevine roots. So the best place to look for it will be where roots should be. So let's, let's do some digging here. Oh, that soil is nice and not pretty loosened at all. That's very beautiful. Alrighty, scalpel, thank you. So again, we're looking for, for roots, but this is a little bit concerning because I just dig, dug two big scoop holes and I am not finding many grapevine roots. Well, if you think about it, that would make sense. This canopy is not very vigorous. Something clearly has messed up the, the irrigation and, and water uptake for this particular plant. And so notice, we're digging, we're digging. There is a, not a lot of anything right there except for maybe this little guy. Other scalpel. Thank you. If we look at this, this, this is pretty much the only root piece that we found in this entire section. Uh, that's, that's not too good. Notice there's very little root. It's actually entirely dead. And this is a very common problem with phylloxera. The feeding itself isn't what kills the plant, but it's all the secondary rot organisms that move in once the vine root is starting to die. So for example, we happen to have found these other root pieces on a severely impacted plant. And notice that these main roots, totally rotted, dead or dying, absolutely no fine root hairs. You're not gonna find phylloxera on a root that has no root hairs for which the phylloxera can feed. So even though these really symptomatic plants are a good place to start, don't be surprised if you can't find enough, any phylloxera on them. So if symptomatic plants have a really damaged root system and we can't find phylloxera, the best place to probably find phylloxera are on vines that look pretty healthy, but are nearby the symptomatic plants. So let's go look at some of those. So as we're moving up the vineyard here, you notice pretty unhealthy vines. Oh yeah, that's a good one, Gwen. Definitely not what we want to see. With a clear cut, healthy line as you go up the vineyard, it's easy to see. It's very easy to see. So very, very small canopies, very small canopies. And oh, wait, what do we see right across the row here? These are some pretty look, healthy looking canopies, Gwen. And it's easy to think about because phylloxera can often move up and down a row. Absolutely, absolutely. So as we go along, as we go along, oh, what do you know, Gwen? Somebody has pre-dug a hole for us in which we can look at grapevine roots. Oh, that's the power of extension in your vineyard. Absolutely. So let's, let's look a little bit closer. So here, we see a bunch of grapevine roots already in the hole. These roots, as you probably already noticed, have a lot more fine root hairs. Excellent, fantastic, or fine, fine roots. And honestly, with a healthy vine, we even start to notice some actual active grapevine phylloxera galls. So here you see these creamy colored white bulges. That is the root forming a gall as a result of phylloxera feeding. So the interesting thing here is these are fresh galls as noted by that fresh creamy white tissue, but older galls will look pretty similar to this and honestly look a lot like um, dried dark brown mouse droppings on the plant. So old galls will dry out and die and those are the ones that look like mouse droppings. Fresh galls will be creamy and white. But again, you really only find galls on plants that have a healthy enough root system to support the smaller root or smaller root growth. If the vine has no roots, you will not find phylloxera. So let, let's look for some phylloxera itself. So when you're digging up and looking for phylloxera, they can be sometimes challenging to see 
but what you can see fairly easily with the naked eye is gold or yellow um, specks along the root. What that actually indicates, if you were to look with your, ha your hand lens, is uh, a cluster or a mass of sometimes dozens of individual phylloxera louse. So if you looked uh, with your hand lens, you could see many, many individuals within that one single gold mass. And you can see them sometimes going all the way up a root. But it is difficult to sometimes see, if you looked at this and you wanted to see an individual louse because it's only one millimeter big, and they sometimes change color from, from pale yellow to dark brown, and that can be challenging. And sometimes they hide underneath little crevices within this bark. But almost with any uh, severe infection, you can see these large gold masses. That's your telltale sign to start using your hand lens and be able to pick up on clusters of Phylloxera louse.